Animal Photography at City Zoos. William Hovey Smith, 2013. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and of course we do considerable wildlife photography. And this is what I use, a Canon 35mm single lens reflex. Now this is always best if it's mounted on a tripod. This is Hovey Smith with Hovey's Outdoor Adventures. And I am at the Chiha Wild Animal Park near Albany, Georgia. And uh, what we're going to do is some wild animal photography. And I want to take you through some of the techniques so you can go to a facility like this and actually use an SLR, a single lens reflex camera, and get some decent pictures. Likely the first thing you'll want to shoot is some documentation of signage to show actually where you are. Now sometimes there will be bronze lines and things that you can get some good photos of to get you started. Well here is a typical problem. We have a couple of Burmese pythons and one is a rare albino python and the other his regularly colored roommate there. And they are behind of course glass and the contrast is is very very strong plus you have the problem of reflection so if you're going to take a still picture you need to approach this from an angle so that you do not get a flashback directly into the face of the camera all right we have an image and we have good detail on the darker snake but we've lost it on the lighter one, which is not <laughs> unusual. We'll try another frame here. There she goes. She's lifting her head a little bit. Bang. Okay. Here are the photos I exposed for the lighter snake, and that eyeball gave a focal point so you can see the image. In this case, you can really see the problems of the glass case. My reflection there is in the case, and the snake is not all that well presented. Our friendly cane break rattler here has just shed its skin. And so the coloration on the hide is actually as nice and pretty as it ever gets. Uh, you can see the skin sort of wrapped around those cypress knees in the background. Now the head is comparatively small for so huge a snake. And in fact, the head and the rattles are off to the extreme right of the photograph. And he's breathing, and so that has frosted the glass a little bit. So we'll try a picture at an angle to the snake to show a close-up of the head. Here is the photo, but the condensation on the glass is really a problem. Uh, you can hardly just barely make out the rattles. Now here's another picture of a snake under glass and of a kimono dragon. So it is possible if you have good glass that you can get good photos. And here we have a typical Georgia gator. And he's out there amidst the duckweed and just moving around a little bit. A lot of them just lying up and not doing much. And here we have a great big gator. Uh, this is something all the tourists who come to Georgia want to see. Uh, and this is about as close as you actually need to get to one of these things. Uh, if we were not up here on a catwalk, I mean, he can cover the 15 feet between me and he in an instant, should he be so inclined, and come at you all teeth and ugly. That gator is probably about a thousand pounds you notice how very broad he is across the belly that is a very old gator now this gator is all laid out for maximum sun capture <laughs> he's getting nice and warm there and here's a picture of our huge gator again uh, taken with the SLR well the murkat are active little creatures and handsome in their own way Woof. Yeah. What? Now here are a couple uh, standing up doing sentinel duty for the colony. Larger animals like the rhino here and others in cages 
are difficult to shoot without showing the cages themselves. Sometimes you can get a little more intimate pictures of them, and they will be separated enough that you can show them with a relatively clean background. Now here, I've taken a series of photos to show actually the bear rolling over, having a good yawn, and then rolling back to where he was. So, okay, he was enjoying himself a little bit. Now, uh, some settings in some zoos offer better picture possibilities. Now, there are also native wildlife here, like the squirrels. And sometimes these can actually be the best for photographing. This little pintail drake, he's minding his own business. He's just feeding along. And then here comes his brother all mad and angry at attack speed. He's going for him, guys. And here's how the picture was taken. You see the pink flamingos? Well, that's what gives the coloration in the water. Besides backyard deer hunting, I have other books too, like crossbow hunting, extreme muzzle loading, and practical bow fishing. And all of these are available as e-books. I have a new eight-book e-book series on muzzleloading guns. Muzzleloading for hunters, buying used muzzleloading guns, and shooting and maintaining your muzzleloader are now available. These are a few tips using relatively simple SLRs, when camera equipment, and a tripod. Now, you can get good results with this. Now, if you have telephoto lenses with longer focal lengths, you can get really spectacular close-ups, but these cost a lot of money. Now, for more about my books, blogs, and videos, go to my website, www.hovysmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.